when shooting under a dark, heavy sky that forces the photographer to use a long shutter speed that is difficult to hand hold, a tripod may be essential. However, if their use is not permitted and the lens is already working at full aperture, the alternatives are to increase the ISO or to use an image stabiliser. Olympus have been at the forefront of this latter technology, at first in camera, allowing the use of most Olympus OMD lenses, and now recently in the lens itself. This is used in conjunction with the camera's stabiliser, and by hand-holding the camera, you can get away with murder. Well, <laughs> metaphorically speaking, of course. Tripods are not allowed inside some churches and all National Trust properties, and neither is flash photography. So some half-forgotten basic traditional skills are perhaps needed with the help of some new computerised sophistication. Last November I gave a landscape photography workshop to the Royal Photographic Society East Midlands Group. There was time for photography, but during that extended weekend the sun did not come out to play. However, Anne and Malcolm Sales made up for that lack of sunlight by providing excellent hospitality and two outings visiting Cork Abbey and Kettlestone Hall, both National Trust properties. A cloudy sky at Cork Abbey was not good for the big view. It needed a more intimate and closer composition, but the classic 12 to 100 Pro lens with its built-in stabiliser gave sufficient flexibility even at f4 maximum aperture. Trees that are still in leaf will hide the sky. A dull sky becomes the brightest part of the image, reducing overall colour. Get rid of the sky, and the colours shine to the extent that you are almost fooled into thinking that it was a beautiful sunny day. The house was not open, but near the orangery were some sheds, the interiors very dark. They contained a hodgepodge of articles that made good photographic subjects. The exposure in the bothy, as here, was a third of a second, handheld at 200 ISO with the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II plus the ever faithful 12 to 100 Pro lens. Sharpness made possible by the dual image stabilization of both camera and lens. An aperture of f4 reduces depth of field, especially with longer focal length lenses. This can be shown by photographing the moss on the bothy roof. Because of sensor size, micro four thirds offers more depth of field than many other larger formats, but it is nonsense, total nonsense, to suggest that differential focusing is not possible. It is, and can be shown by simply zooming in. I presume that such ridiculous statements are made by photographers who can only use their cameras on auto. If they knew how apertures and focal lengths of lenses affect depth of field, they would not say these things. Some rooms at Kettleston were open. The low soft light making photography easier, even though the shutter speed was again around a third of a second. I always, yes, always try to keep the ISO at 200 to maintain my own professional standards. But the dynamic range is reduced, making exposure easier to manage when the window is in shot. This was a serious problem a few weeks earlier at Batemans in Sussex, when strong sunlight caused highlights through the window to blow out. But fortunately, Lightroom did come to my rescue. Hand-holding technique in low light without a tripod and an image stabiliser is largely forgotten. 
It works best with the wide angle end of a zoom lens. Stand four square on two stout legs, work out the composition first, and then, when ready, raise camera to eye and compose, breathe in and hold breath, take picture. Not very high tech, is it? And you won't find that advice in the menu of the camera either. But it works. Yes, it works for any fit person. Doesn't cost much, and you are not lugging around a load of gear that can't be used. Thank you.